Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Thank you, everybody, for being on the webinar um, on time tonight. My name is Wisdom Cole. I'm the National Organizing Manager for the Youth in College Division. I'm going to give it a couple more minutes for folks to join us, but thank you for being here. For folks who just joined us, we're going to be starting shortly in about two minutes. Um, to waiting for a few more folks to jump on our webinar tonight, but we'll be getting started shortly. All right, y'all, we're going to get started for tonight. Um, thank you for being on our webinar. This is, I believe, our eighth webinar we've had in our civic engagement series um, for our Level Up NAACP campaign. Um, tonight, we're going to further talking about databasing 
and the the van system that we use within the NAACP. And we're going to give you um, a short one-on-one -on -one in terms of the ins and outs of the van, as well as um, if you're interested in using the van system, how to further get connected with uh, that system um, through the NAACP. Um, so in tonight's webinar, uh, we're talking about databasing and the, the databasing one-on-one and uh, why it's important and how we use it um, for the work that we do. Uh, we're talking about voter contact and how to begin um, thinking about your voter contact plan. Uh, we'll also be talking about registering, pledging, and databasing, which is just the essentials in terms of making sure that you are creating a, a really powerful voter database that you can also uh, connect to the van system later on. Um, and we'll be giving a short uh, van one-on-one. -on -one. And then at the end, there'll be also time for question and answer. Um, again, if you have any questions or you're interested in staying up to date with the most up to date information with the NAACP, definitely connect with us at NAACP underscore YC on our Instagram page. So just a reminder of our goals for 2018 um, in our Level Up campaign. Uh, one, we want to increase voter registration from 18 to 25 year olds, right? Uh, so in particular, we're looking for people who are the most infrequent voters, and that tends to be young people and also tends to be young people of color. And so um, connecting that to goal three, which is to educate and turn out all people of color in our community, uh, we want to really think about how we are uh, making sure our folks are educated and they know what is on the ballot. Um, and in the past webinars and webinars to come, we're actually been talking a lot about voter education in different ways uh, voter education has been done. And then uh, number two, we want a base bill to begin to shift relationships to power. So this is also an opportunity to increase membership within your unit, to increase membership with on, on your campus, um, and use this as a platform to launch um, any campaigns that you are planning on doing on your campus in the near future. Um, so if you have any questions during the webinar, definitely feel free to drop any questions in our question box if you are on the online application. Um, when we get to our question and answer session, we'll definitely answer those. So we are 30 days away from the 2018 midterm election. And so we've, we've been seeing a lot of work happening on the ground. Folks have been doing voter registration all across the state. Folks have been getting to, do, to start doing uh, voter education. And for a lot of uh, states, they're actually, uh, the last day to register to vote will be coming up pretty soon this week, October 9th. Um, personally, I was just in Ohio working with some students out there, helping them set up voter registration drives. Um, and so continuing to push people to, to do voter registration. But what we've been seeing a lot happening is that folks haven't been databasing who they are uh, registering to vote. And so what we want to do in the near future is provide folks with um, opportunity to get connected with resources such as uh, voter pledge cards, uh, door hangers, t-shirts, um, anything that's gonna make the, the get out the vote efforts easier for you to do, easier for you to connect with. Um, so definitely stay connected with us about that. Um, yeah. So again, um, if you're wondering if you're actually registered to vote, uh, when we had National Voter Registration Day, we actually set up a small bit link that you see below where you can check your voter registration status. Um, if you're not currently registered to vote at your current address or you're not registered to vote at all, you can update your status using that link. And then last but not least, you can register to vote there and share it with friends. So I encourage folks to keep using this link. Um, we, I believe we've had over 300 people use the link and register to, to vote on it. And so we wanna to continue to encourage folks to use this link, share with friends, share with people at your school, and making sure that uh, folks understand uh, that this is also a quick, simple way to make sure that people on your campus are registered or have the most updated information. Um, I actually saw at Ohio uh, students actually using the link and airdropping it to one another in a classroom setting by doing a class wrap and then airdropping to the whole class. And so uh, I encourage y'all to think creatively about how you are using the link, how are you doing voter registration. Um, a lot of folks are doing voter registration in uh, different parts of the country by attending events that people already go to and ensuring that people there are already registered to vote, having small giveaways, um, having different confirmations, having uh, voter registration parties, right? So again, uh, think creatively about how you're doing this work um, and make sure it's fun. So databasing. So when you're thinking about a voter database, right? A voter database essentially, it contains information of voters for the purpose of assisting them in the get out the vote efforts, right? So as we are finishing and wrapping up our voter 
registration um, period, uh, we're getting into the get out the vote efforts, right? Um, oftentimes what I talk about is that even if you've registered a thousand people to vote, if they don't turn out to the polls on November 6th, what was that work for, right? So we want to ensure that folks are making are turning out on November 6th and folks are able to get to the polls efficiently and you're thinking through this whole process. And so how are you maybe alleviating some of the stress uh, for folks to get to the polls? How are you making sure that folks are informed? How are you making sure that folks um, know where their polling place is? Um, and in our past webinars, we talk a little about some voter education events that you can have. But using a voter database allows you to continue to have contact with the people that you have already talked to about the get out the vote efforts and making sure and ensuring that they actually turn out on November 6th. And so oftentimes voter databases are used to fundraise, right? So if there's folks who are in your network or folks who are registered to vote who are also interested in supporting the efforts you're doing and actually uh, monetarily donating to the cause, this is a great way to fundraise. Um, again, this is also another great way to recruit. Maybe some of the people that you have already got registered to vote are people who are interested in being a part of your organization, and you can use them as volunteers within the work that you do. Um, this is also a great way to track your issues, right? What are people um, interested in and what are people thinking about in terms of this midterm election, and how are you properly educating them about what is on the ballot um, this upcoming November? And the last but not least, right, get out the vote, which essentially is how are we making sure that folks have all the appropriate information, and how do we convert those, if, we, if we're registering a 1,000 people right in our, on our campus or in our area, um, how are we making sure that those people actually uh, get converted to actual uh, voters who turned out on November 6th? So oftentimes, uh, what's kept in a voter database is uh, personal data information, right, such as the name, uh, physical address or mailing address, phone numbers, any uh, party membership or affiliation, if there's a uh, voting history, right, and so we're talking a little about that later on when we talk about the van system, but any kind of history that is has to do with what they've uh, voted for in the past, if they've done absentee ballots or the military voting designations, um, what are the sources of voter registration, right, so where did it come from, did it come from on campus, did it come from DMV, did it come from any other um, office of assistance, right, um, also you can also begin to see different um, racial groups and ethnicities and um, what groups are voting towards certain areas, as well as what genders and um, birth date or age range. And so later on, when we talk about building your own voter database, um, it doesn't need to be as complicated as this, uh, but when you're thinking about full national scale voter databases, oftentimes it includes uh, much of the information, right? And so if you're thinking about your campus and thinking about who is on your campus and what kind of information you're interested in gathering, um, this is also a great project to think about in terms of like, okay, when you when we finish November 6th, right, who are the type of people who turned out to vote and what areas were we effective in getting um, certain crowds or individuals to actually turn out, right? What were the majors? What were the classrooms? What were the teachers? Um, who are the folks who are very vital in actually making sure that people actually turned out to the polls and thinking about how we can use what we learned from this um, election cycle for our 2020 election cycle. So essentially, databasing allows us to track who we have, who we have made contact with, and ensure that they turn out to the polls. Right? That's just kind of the, the 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 beginning and end of it. Right? Thinking to make sure that you are tracking who's coming out and who has actually been um, contacted. So when we think of voter contact, there are essentially five steps of voter contact that we want to think about particularly. Um, Number one is identifying and registering potential voters, right, which you all have been doing so far um, very beautifully that I might add as well. And so making sure that you are um, actually listing that as the very first time of contact that you have uh, talked with your, with your potential voters as. Um, if folks have gotten to sign a voter pledge cards, you know, writing down that they've uh, pledged to vote, um, collecting that, that contact information and entering it into the database. Um, and so you want to be very careful especially as you do voter registration, that you're not necessarily um, pulling direct information from voter registration cards, but having voter databases or voter my bad, voter pledge cards where you can actually pull straight information from, right? And so you're having people do uh, their voter registration uh, cards, but also saying that they're pledging to vote. And the folks who have already done the voter registration, including them in the different voter pledge cards, so you can also database them as well. Uh, the second voter contact is uh, verifying registration, right? So making sure um, that they are ver that are ver they're verified 
um, to vote and they are registered to vote. And so using that link would be really, really handy for folks to make sure that they are um, currently registered to vote in their area or at their address, right? And so confirming their polling place. So what you can do is also look up what polling places that people have, uh, depending on your campus, depending on how um, certain lines are drawn or split. Uh, there might be different polling locations all across your campus um, or in your city that folks um, may have easy access to or might be uh, more difficult access to. And so um, either calling people or emailing them or having them come to events where they know where their polling place is. Maybe you have an event where you have folks take a trip to their polling location and you have um, a little gathering or a little meet and greet so people know the exact location and they're familiar with um, where to go um, when it comes to November 6th. This is also a perfect opportunity to distribute uh, voter education guides and sample ballots. And so if you actually go to our NAACP Civic Engagement page, we have uh, voter ID and education guides for all states. And so you can um, have access to that and use that and adapt that and make sure that folks know what they need when they actually turn out to the polls. Because when we think about voting, um, voter suppression is very real. We want to make sure that everyone's vote is protected. And we'll actually be talking about that later in our next national webinar and actually having some folks speak about uh, voter suppression and voter protection and how to ensure that. But we want to make sure that we have uh, folks well informed so that when they actually turn out to vote, that they're not turned away um, when they get to their polling locations. Uh, sample ballots really help so people are familiar with how the ballot looks like, right, for, uh, for freshmen or people who are their first time voting. Maybe they're not familiar. I know I well, the first time I voted, I wasn't familiar with it at all. And so being able to see it ahead of time so I know what it looks like, knowing what issues are going to be on the ballot, and knowing um, how to make the decisions that I want to make when I turn out to vote. Um, and also, you know, having events that talk about the issues or with candidates. I know in Georgia, uh, they just had a uh, Janelle Monet and Andrew Rye come out and actually speak about voting and the power of voting. And they're not necessarily candidates, but they're people who are very influential in this uh, sphere and have uh, influence um, around young people. And so thinking about maybe what are creative ways in which you can invite people to have um, conversations with young people about voting and the importance of this election. Uh, the third contact is you want to begin to invite people to forums, debates, movies, events, right? So maybe you're having uh, other NAACP events on campus. Uh, maybe you're doing um, membership drives for your own NAACP unit on campus. Maybe you're having a movie night. Um, I know what I've been encouraging a lot of our younger units to do. I know the movie The Hate You Give is coming out uh, later on this month. And so maybe uh, finding a way to see if you can get discounted tickets from your local movie theaters or taking a trip with um, your unit or other folks to go see a movie and including people in that event so people are getting connected right because oftentimes people just want to connect with other folks and when people are connected with other folks they're going to be encouraged to actually turn out to vote on november 6th and so um, using different opportunities as points of leverage for folks to be able to uh, get engaged with this work as well as um, be around folks who are actually uh, supporting them to actually turn out to vote um, if you're offering rides to the polls see uh, what students will need ones, right? So this is also a perfect uh, ability to see, hey, uh, if you're giving, uh, you're doing a phone banking and you're calling people and asking them if they're able to come out on November 6th to vote, and maybe they say they have work all day and they have a little bit of time between lunch, but they can't get from uh, work to the polling location, maybe there's a way that you can offer rides. Uh, I know that uh, talking with other organizations, folks have been trying to work with like uh, ride sharing services to get discounted codes to the polls. And so maybe there's ways that people could take uh, a group Lyft or a group Uber, but those are just a, a few ideas that you can use, but thinking again, creatively about how to make sure that folks actually are ensured to turn out on November 6th. Um, as we get into the final week, so when we're thinking about the end of October, the beginning of November, we really wanna begin to confirm that students are prepared to vote. Are students aware of the issues? Are students know who on the ballot? And are students, you know, just are they 100% sure about where their polling location is, and um, again, just asking them, are they going to vote on November 6th, and making sure that that's a, a guaranteed, right? And I'll show you how to make sure that you can uh, database that and put that in your in your database as well. Um, and then uh, the fifth time is Election Day, right? So on Election Day, we're thinking about um, how are we doing door knocking, how are we calling our database, how are we emailing our database, maybe you have a nice newsletter, maybe you have some kind of event, maybe you have something that is... Uh, accessible for as many people as possible because you really want to be visible on election day to show that people are coming together 
and people are actually turning out to the polls on November 6th. So uh, you, again, think creatively, um, call folks, engage with folks, uh, make sure that folks are solidified to actually turn out on November 6th. So what I, what I call this is, I call this um, our messaging surround sound, right? Um, oftentimes it takes uh, at least five to eight times for folks to really internalize a key message. And so um, when you're doing voter contact, right, you want to think about the diversity of ways in which you are contacting a voter and making sure that you're not just overusing one thing, right? Um, I know as young people, oftentimes we're on our phones and we're using text message services, which is also really great. But I think also engaging folks um, in the personal and making sure that folks have that one-to-one -one connection and one-to-one -one contact where they're able to talk with people uh, to make it realistic for them. And so thinking about what are different ways in which they, in which you are engaging people uh, around the vote in a, in a surround sound system, right? How are people seeing flyers around campus? Are people seeing you tabling? Uh, have you been in people's classrooms? Have you had different events? Have you had campus debates? What are ways in which you are engaging people in multiple methods and multiple strands to actually turn out on November 6th? So the registering, pledging, and database. Uh, so again, like I said earlier, right, when you're registering folks and getting people to fill out registration cards, in addition to the registration cards, you should also include a pledge card, which can be found on our civic engagement site. Um, where you're asking folks for their name, you're asking folks for their phone number, you're asking them for their email, you're asking them for their address, their city, their state, their zip code, um, all the information, right? Um, later on, maybe asking folks for, not even later on, but actually immediately, you can ask people for the major, you can ask them for other information that might be vital to think about when you're thinking about uh, the next election cycle. So you're seeing what kind of trends or what type of people um, are actually turning out to vote and um, where you can increase your target demographic, right? So maybe, uh, certain, you can maybe even look like maybe there's certain people in certain majors on your campus who are more informed, while as people in other majors aren't. Or maybe certain classrooms or certain teachers are actually supporting your, your efforts, while other teachers are not. And so thinking about how you can increase or even incentivize ways for folks to actually um, support the efforts you're doing um, and making sure that they're, them in their classroom as well are actually getting their students or uh, folks in their dorms or folks in their vicinity or folks that they're connected with to actually register um, understand the issues and turn out. So when I'm thinking about uh, creating my own database, right, I always think about uh, having the name, year, major, essential things like emails, phone number, address. Uh, what is your registration status, right? So maybe you have people who come up to you and they're, they're a little busy and they say they can't register right now. How are you making sure you get their, their basic information so that you can follow up with them about um, registration, right? So even a quick, hey, can I just get your phone number real quick and I will call you later to make sure that you register to vote. Um, or I can pass you this link where you can register while you're on your way to class or um, other alternative ways, right? We've talked about uh, text pledges um, as well as uh, registering online as well. And so how are you staying in contact with people to let them know uh, to, to track their registration status? Um, have you got people to sign pledge cards? Where did they say they signed the pledge card now? Are they gonna sign the pledge card later? Uh, at what point in time did it sign the pledge card? Maybe you had multiple events and you have somebody who's signed multiple pledge card, which is even greater, um, but making sure that you have a, a confirmation that you can remind people, hey, you signed this pledge to vote on this date. Um, I'm just reminding you that the elections are coming up on November 6th um, or early voting period is gonna be over at a certain time. And so uh, making sure you're using the pledge cards as a, just a reminder of why folks are deciding to vote um, how people have pledged to vote and using this to actually input your data. And then from there, you can uh, track the five points of voter contact. So this is what a sample campus uh, vote database looks like, right? Essentially, it has the basic information. It has students' names, it has their year, it has their major, it has their email address, it has their phone number, and it has their physical mailing address, right? Um, you have your email address, so you can send out email blasts. Um, if you're thinking about different systems to use for email blasts, um, MailChimp is a really good system. It's a free service that you can use where you can send email blasts um, actually on a schedule. We actually use that within our Youth and Cause Division where we can send an email blast on a schedule so folks can get that email um, and get the information necessary or maybe any updates, right, that you're having about events or other um, get out the vote efforts that you're doing along the, the trail. Uh, phone numbers, right? So you have phone numbers so you can do uh, phone banking. Um, so you're getting different volunteers together 
to actually call these numbers and actually uh, contact people and have that kind of one-to-one -one interaction with them over the phone. Maybe you're getting them to register over the phone as well. Uh, maybe you're just letting them know about their polling place. Maybe you're letting them know about uh, just reminding people about the November 6th election. And the reason why I keep saying November 6th a lot is because a lot of people, you actually, it's surprising, we actually go into a room um, and ask people when the election date is. A lot of folks uh, won't know. And so just re-emphasizing saying that, making that kind of a mantra in which uh, folks are actually uh, knowing the date and being familiar with that because the more and more they hear the date, the more and more they're going to be like, oh, like, am I registered to vote? Oh, do I know where to, to go for my polling place? Oh, do I know what issues are on the ballot? And it makes them become more and more aware um, and more and more cognizant of that date versus it just be another date that just goes by and passes them um, as well. Uh, then you have your physical mailing address where yeah, maybe you can send out some uh, voter guides to them or maybe you're putting door hangers on their dorms or their apartments or maybe if you live off campus, you're uh, going off campus and doing door knocking or sending them some information. But um, this is also another great way to understand uh, your voter contact program so you know uh, what information is necessary to, to contact them in multiple ways. Um, again, like I said, you're having a column where you're asking people, you're, you're checking to see if people are registered to vote. If they register to vote, if they're not confirmed, if they don't have uh, the current address not updated, right? Just making sure you know what status they are in uh, their registration. Have they pledged to vote, right? Um, at some t a point of contact while you were talking to them, have they pledged to vote and um, documenting that as well. And then you're going to have five points of voter contact and you're going to document what way in which you contact them. So was it uh, a phone bank? Uh, was it tabling? Was it uh, door knocking? Was it a one-on-one -on -one conversation? Did it come to an event that you have, right? Um, those are all great ways to make sure that you are tracking your voter contact. So when you're doing your databasing, um, I wanna encourage everybody to one, to always, always have a sign-up sheet um, or pledge cards at every event. When you have sign-up sheets um, at, at events and pledge cards, you can take that back either on, I've seen people do like a, a digital download Friday or technology Tuesday or something in which they um, are getting people together and actually going through the information and putting the information into the databasing system. And so uh, you want to make sure that you have sign-in sheets at every single event. Um, I've also another great way to do this is uh, folks can also make Google Forums, right? So you can, you can literally take this same campus voter database, make a Google Forum, and um, actually have folks input this information directly, right? And so uh, that's another quick way to make sure folks are actually registered to vote and that people have pledged to vote and um, what ways are best to contact them as well, right? You can maybe have a question that says, is it better to contact you through email, through your phone number or your mailing address? What times of the day are you, are you most available, right? Um, and maybe we can even make a sample one for folks to, to use and send out as well. But again, like you're thinking creatively about ways in which you can make the process easier or smoother for yourself to get um, the information necessary uh, to contact your voters. Uh, you want to get at least 10 volunteers, 10 volunteers to meet one day a week, right? So um, at a minimum, right, when you're thinking about, we talked about uh, base building earlier in our webinar series, but base building is very important because the, the volunteers are the core or they're the crux of the work that we do. And so it's very, very important that at minimum, everybody should be able to get 10 volunteers just to be able to meet on one day so they, they, they can take all these sign-in sheets, they can take all these pledge cards, and maybe for some people, they're, they're databasing them immediately, but if you're not databasing immediately, choosing a day of the week where people can come together for at least an hour to two hours and input the information, right? Seeing where if there's information that overlaps, how many times have people been contacted, have people come to your event one time, two times, three times, four times, maybe they come to your, your event eight times, which is even greater, Right, just tracking to see, okay, who are the people that we've actually put time into and actually turned out to vote versus the people who we haven't put time into and when we get closer and closer to November 6th that we need to actually contact more and actually make sure to remind them to actually vote and let them know what's actually on the ballot. Uh, again, right, you wanna identify who you've contacted, how you contacted them, right? So you can make maybe different voter codes, right? Maybe PB for phone banking, uh, T for tabling, you know, Again, like think about what's going to work for your campus. Um, again, you can contact me if you want to get, you want to brainstorm some ideas as well. But um, you want to think about basically documenting on your Excel sheet or whatever system that you're using how you're contacting these people um, over the course of the the campaign trail. Um, 
Number five, you want to set up next steps to contact people. So once you've identified who you've contacted, right, maybe certain people you've contacted a lot and they're good, certain people you haven't contacted as much, um, you want to make sure that you think about what are the next steps, like what are the events, what are phone banking, door knocking, other emails you can send to make sure that those people have been contacted. Um, I know sometimes we, send to, we tend to have the same people show up to events. We have the same people turn up to our tabling, the same people who are in the classes that we are in right, who are already active, and that's great because we know that those people are gonna turn out to vote, but we wanna also think about our low propensity voters, right, the people who often we don't interact with, the people who um, often don't turn out to events, the people who might be too busy to actually be a part of the NAACP or the different events that we're having on campus, right, but maybe you, you, you were able to get them to register to vote or you've had some contact with them, really, really thinking about what are ways or creative ways in which you can include them in this movement and contact them on the, the campaign trail as well. Again, if you have any questions about databasing, definitely feel free to drop a question below and we will answer it when we get to the question and answer section. So Van 101. Um, so this is gonna be a, a quick just Van 101 training in terms of what the Van system is, how the Van system is used, and a little bit of what it looks like and how data is collected. Um, I'll talk to you later about how you can get um, on the van system. I know a few folks already have access to the van, which is great, um, but thinking about for folks who are interested in getting access to the van, um, what that looks like and how to get further training on how to use it and how to use it efficiently because it is uh, sensitive information and um, it is actually tracked very carefully. So the van system essentially stands for the Voter Action Network. Um, it's a national database used to track and identify voters. Um, and if you actually think about how President Obama um, won the election, it actually was through um, effectively mobilizing voters through a system, right? Uh, the NAACP uses the same VAN system to mobilize our voters in our neighborhoods, right? So we've been using the VAN system for quite a, some time to make sure that we um, are tracking our voters and mobilizing people in our community so we can identify what are the areas in terms of what areas or what locations in which we need to really, really put in the put in that hard work so we can actually turn people out to vote. Um, using the data from the van, it allows us to look at voting trends of registered voters, and we can uh, utilize precise targeting and strategies to successfully increase turnout at the state level um, and by county or by district, right? So we can look at particular states um, and states in which, you know, that we deem as swing states and what counties within those states uh, do we actually need to target um, folks to actually make sure that they are turning out to vote so we can begin to actually turn the tides of these elections, right? Um, oftentimes it comes down, comes down to certain counties or certain areas where if we can get more people to actually turn out to vote, um, things can actually change. And so we want to be very particular about what areas, what locations, and what places that we're actually targeting um, when we are actually try trying to collect this data. So how the van system can be used, right? So number one, um, the van system can be looked can be used to look up and identify infrequent voters, right? To also look at you know who in your network or who in your area, your county, or your location is registered to vote already, um, as well as people who are infrequent voters, right? You can look at past voter trends and seeing okay if folks have uh, voted in the past elections, have they voted in past midterm elections, right? And oftentimes people don't turn out to vote for the midterm elections, and so thinking about okay. Um, the more and more we get people to turn out for these elections, the more and more we can actually impact some change that actually directly um, affects us, right? Uh, another way that we can use the van system is for phone banking efforts, right? So we can look, your unit can actually gather a group of volunteers to call voters one by one on this list and actually do that phone banking that we talked about earlier, record their response and enter that into the van in terms of who you've actually contacted um, around um, the vote efforts. Uh, the, uh, the van system also offers uh, GOTV scripts, right? So you want to think about what uh, issues are very important to students on your campus. <coughs> Excuse me. What issues are um, on the the current ballot that are um, that are important to students that you can actually make sure you have a script that is um, specifically targeted towards talking to your demographic of people, right? You don't want to just be talking about anything and saying like, oh, uh, I'm talking about other issues. That are actually not relevant to folks in this in this area. You want to be thinking particularly about what issues affect your campus, 
what if issues affect your city, what um, issues affect your state, what issues affect your county, um, so that when you're talking to students, when you're talking to people, that people actually resonate with what you um, are speaking about. You know, oftentimes we talk about how people are driven. People are driven by their head and they're driven by their heart. And so you want to make sure that when you're talking to people that you're actually engaging them in things that are very important to them, right? Oftentimes for students, we're thinking about student loan debt. We're thinking about fighting against tuition increase, um, but maybe there's other issues that are on the ballot um, or that people who are going to be elected um, in, in certain gubernatorial races um, or certain seats uh, that will have an impact on um, making sure that we are electing the proper people so they can make the decisions that represent us. So this is quickly just what the, our van system looks like, right? You can see that when you get into the van system, it has a welcome. Um, particularly what areas that we're going to be looking at is uh, the quick lookup file where you can look up uh, different people in your area um, and particularly to create um, a new list. And the creating a new list is what's going to actually allow us to, to identify infrequent voters. So identifying infrequent voters in the fan system um, allows us to contact folks through our GOTV program, and it's actually really, really simple. Uh, what it kind of entails is creating a list um, in your My Voters tab and setting the location, right? So essentially what it's doing is that it's looking at the location, it's looking at the target demographic, and it's creating a list of uh, folks in that area. You can look at people's voting history, and you, be you can begin to see different voting trends and how um, folks have voted in the past or how folks have not shown up in the past. And so you can know what people that you need to particularly um, hone in on or, or talk to more during this election cycle, right? If you're thinking about people who have shown up to vote um, every single election or um, maybe they're a fourth year on campus um, and they voted in the last election cycle um, and they're somebody who has been engaged on campus, um, maybe contacting them a couple times is gonna be, it's gonna do the trick because they're already kind of um, engaged and they know what's up versus somebody who maybe is a first time voter or somebody who is maybe in their fourth year of college and actually has never voted ever, thinking that you know this is somebody who is possibly about to graduate and has actually never voted. And so we need to actually uh, increase the efforts to make sure they are informed and actually get out to vote, right? Maybe they've been too busy. Maybe they just haven't been aware about what's happening on campus or where what's happening um, in the state or in the in the country. And so this is a perfect opportunity to make sure that they get engaged a little bit more. Uh, throughout this process. And so you definitely want to look at that voting history so you can track folks. Um, so once you do that, this will present a list of your selected area and demographic of infrequent voters who can reach, uh, you can reach for your GOTV uh, campaign. So from here, you can begin to structure how you want to actually do your GOTV campaign, right? Um, thinking about it's better to start out with doing some phone banking to contact everybody that I have in my list serve already. Um, is it better to start out with an email, right? Oftentimes I'm thinking about uh, for young people, is it better just to text them and make sure they're engaged through um, different text messaging services, right? So if you have those phones, you can text them really quickly, letting them know, reminding them about what is actually um, on the, the, the ballot as well as certain information about polling places and um, the dates to, to vote. Uh, the van data, uh, what this data includes um, particularly is, again, like I said before, voting history, demographics, contact information, what are likely party um, affiliations, uh, survey results collected by volunteers. Uh, so all that, that good stuff that's necessary to, to be informed about how we are actually uh, contacting our folks in this uh, process. Um, where the data comes from. So the data comes from uh, the state certified election results national changes of address registry, um, the Social Security Department, the USPS verified address, and consumer databases. And so um, all these kind of come together to, to let us know what actually is in our, our van system and um, how we can uh, efficiently use it in our GOTV uh, efforts.
Sorry about that. All right, last but not least. So how to get access to the van. So if you are have been dedicatedly doing work around voter registration and you want to get access to the van network, I know a few folks already do have access to the van network. Uh, because it does have sensitive information, um, there's a process in which we um, actually give access to our van network. Um, and so what you want to do is that if you send me an email with your name, your unit position, your unit number, um, your state, your county, your school, and your email, as well as the number of voter registrations you have done so far, um, we can work to make sure that you have access to the van network. So think about what the webinars that are coming up next. Uh, we have our Region 2 webinar. Uh, coming up next this coming Wednesday from voter registration to voter education on next Sunday we'll actually be talking about voter contacts and more and early voting as well as some uh, voter protection work as well uh, region one is having a webinar October 17th on voter mobilization and direct contact training on Sunday October 21st we'll be having um, a get out the vote training which will be very important on Wednesday, October 24th, Region 4, we're having a webinar about voter mobilization and direct contact training. And then we'll be having our last two webinars for our civic engagement series on Sunday, October 28th, which will be our final call to action, as well as our um, electoral results on Wednesday, November 7th. All right, so we finished a little bit early. I want to see if folks had any questions about databasing, about the van network, about access to the van, about how the van is used, how to efficiently use the van. I know that was a quick um, one-on-one about it, but if folks had questions, feel free to drop a question below and we can discuss a little bit before we wrap up our webinar for tonight. I got a question about a copy of this PowerPoint. Definitely after this uh, webinar is over, you will get a copy of this uh, presentation. Um, Carolyn Perkins, you had a question? I see a hand raised by Keith. Can you hear me, Keith? Yes. I, thank you so much for this. Can you? Um, great, great presentation. Thank you so much uh, for for sharing this information. I'm the uh, advisor for the High Point Youth Council Unit Five Nine Nine One, and I have a question regarding funding for. Uh, transportation from the schools to the polling place. Our strategy is to provide a, uh, a school bus or a transportation from one from each of the six schools within our High Point area uh, to to take to the polls during early voting. Um, we we found that successful uh, the last two opportunities, but always ran into an issue with uh, funding the the buses. So we know it's maybe $100 per bus, but didn't know of any other opportunities to, uh, uh, or other, any fundraising opportunities that we can use or funding resources, funding sources. Um, so when I'm thinking about uh, funding sources, particularly around getting folks to actually turn out, to, to do early voting, right? So essentially y'all are working on a plan to uh, uh, give people the opportunity to have access to, a dedicated time and space so they can actually uh, get to the polls uh, through this bus service. Correct? Yes, designated a day. Yeah, that's correct. Designated a day per school. And then we it's a more of a healthy competition amongst the schools. And uh, we, we, we arrive, award them through voting rights. And then at our youth uh, council banquet, uh, our uh, youth, youth uh, council banquet, we acknowledge them. So looking at different sources. Nice. Um, so what I would say, you know, seeing if there's folks within um, the adult branches who can also support, right, that's, a, that's um, always a really great way, um, especially when we're thinking about membership as well, but also looking like if there are ways, especially 
talking through talking to local uh, companies or local corporations that are um, in your area, right? Oftentimes these companies have like a social contract, which essentially means that uh, they have certain money that is dedicated to supporting um, certain organizations that are doing work with student development, doing diversity work, doing things that are actually going to um, impact, you know, the future generation. And so these are really great opportunities where you can actually uh, get a lot of funding for these things. And so if you have like a proposal, right, just in terms of like, hey, we have these, we, these are the schools that we um, have. These are the days that we are actually getting people to go out. These are the buses that we have. I think you said it's about $100 or so um, per bus yeah. for, for something. Um, if you had that mm -hmm. out, um, these co uh, companies are actually really, really um, helpful and engaging, right? And so looking in your area, um, I think essentially just having the, the basis of the, most of the companies just need a proposal um, to do this and then uh, seeing where they can uh, contribute and how they can actually have their own information on there. So oftentimes they'll give you like free swag, they'll give you some t-shirts, they'll give you some water bottles, they'll give you some of those things like that. They'll make sure that the logo is at the event as well. Um, but those they're uh, looking at like what are maybe some local companies. Um, I used to live in San Francisco. So social contract. Yep. Yes. Just social contract. Works. Okay. Great. Uh, also, with the pledge cards and door hangers and T-shirts, how do we obtain that? Um, so the pledge cards. Uh, let me see if I can actually. Actually, I'm gonna drop the pledge card right now into the uh, webinar, and actually, can, I can pull it up so folks can see it as well. But the pledge card is on our civic engagement website, and um, I'll actually drop it right now into the webinar and you can download it directly. We just print it off and, okay. And, yeah, and perfect. Send it out. Yep, I have, uh, so I'm gonna drop it right now. Yep, it's and uploaded. The door, the door hangers and t-shirts and I'll, I'll email you uh, afterwards because I know other folks would like to get their, their their say to share their their interests as well. Yeah, um, so we don't have it. We don't have. We don't currently have official door hangers made right now. They're kind of they're currently in design. So right now we're having our t-shirts in design, our door hangers. Um, these are our official pledge cards. But um, once we have that as well, I can definitely inform you about how to get um, a hold of those and maybe seeing if there is printing in your um, area where you can um, actually get them printed off for folks to use in the area. Awesome. Okay. And I'll send you an email. Thank you so much for sharing. No problem. Very no problem. Thank you for your questions. Um, any other hands? McNeil Reyna, can you hear me? I don't know if you have a microphone, but if you can um, either speak into the microphone or drop a question below, we can answer your question. I see that your hand is up. Hi, Wisdom. Hi. Hi, just trying to find out if you can get someone to help some of us that have got some training on van with cutting and pasting. We really need some assistance more with cutting and pasting so we can go specifically in certain areas to right. do some more extensive um, voter registration. Can you say that again? Sorry. Cutting and pasting on van. Mm. On the van. Can we get some assistance with that? In terms of uh, cutting and pasting for the, the with with certain specific neighborhoods, you're right. In each of the um, different areas that we're trying. Yeah. Um, what what um what area are you are you in? Um, so what I can do with that in terms of support with that, I can talk to uh, the regional directors and see if we can support you. If you can email me afterwards, um, or email our, so this is um, this is our NAACP email, but if you can email me directly, what I can do is I can connect you with your regional director in your area, and they can support you um, in that. Uh, let me see if I can unmute you again. Can you hear me? All right, is there, are there any other questions before we wrap up? Um, again, thank you for asking about the, the pledge cards. If you want an example of the pledge cards, definitely download those. 
um, and print those off and use those as opportunities to to do your your, regging, your registration, pledging, and databasing. Any other questions before we wrap up tonight? So quickly, I just want to encourage, before we wrap up tonight, I want to encourage more people uh, to let folks know about um, the upcoming webinars that are coming up. Uh, this Wednesday, we will be having our Region 2 webinar. Next Sunday, we'll be having our voter contact and other voting, other, earlier, uh, sorry, early voting webinar. Um, Wednesday, October 17th, we'll be having our Region 1 webinar. Um, October 21st, we'll be having our GOTV webinar. And um, October 24th, we'll be having our Region 4 webinar. And then our final two webinars at the end. Um, I definitely want to continue to see more and more people participate and increase and be oh, aware of this information. Um, and so there's ways that you as leaders can let folks know that you are in contact with to um, uh, about the webinars, the links, the links are all really available, they're really active. Um, and so you can people can register already and um, be a part of the upcoming webinars uh, for their region or for our national um, for our national ones. So the ones in blue are our national ones, the one in yellow are our regional ones. Um, we will actually be having a couple of guest speakers coming up and a couple board members as well as uh, National Youth Work Committee members on um, our next calls that are coming up in the near future. So definitely stay tuned for that and um, let your base know about these. Um, again, if you have any questions, feel free to email us at youthincollege at naacpnet.org. Well, thank you all for being a part of our webinar tonight. Uh, we're going to wrap up right now um, and have a great night. Thank you very much.